Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Razia and I'm here to help you make better skincare choices. So make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my uploads. And you can also check me out over on Instagram and TikTok for more. The much awaited mineral sunscreen video is finally here. I really, really did take my sweet time with this one. I apologize. I'm just going to be real with you. I didn't take my time with this one because I made sure to try out every single mineral sunscreen ever. I just really do not like mineral sunscreen. So yeah, I was a little bit reluctant each time I had to go and buy and try out a new one. I just didn't want to do it. So it just ended up really, really delaying the production of this video. And here's the thing with mineral sunscreens. Like 99% of the ones that are out there are just unacceptable. They're unwearable. So I did not go and buy every single one and try out every single one because that was just not going to be worth my time and effort. But I did make sure to try out enough of them. By the time you finish watching this video, if you are looking for decent mineral sunscreen options, I will have quite a few for you. It's just that I didn't go and try every single option out there on the market because there is absolutely no need to do that. <laughs> this video is for those of you that can't use chemical sunscreens for whatever reason, or for those of you that do just prefer to use mineral sunscreens and you're looking for decent options. I did give it a good shot and I tried about 11 or so different sunscreens and I've got about four to five good options for you. So it's not all bad. <laughs> so yeah, let's get right into it. And as always, I'm gonna have video pop-ups on the side so that you can see me applying the sunscreen. And for your reference, I have dry acne prone skin. So just keep that in mind when I talk about how the product dries down on my skin and all of that. And I'm gonna start with my least favorite and work my way up to my most favorite. So let's get started. The first few sunscreens, the video pop-ups that I'm gonna have here are purely for entertainment purposes because this portion of the video really is just for your entertainment. You are not gonna get any informative value out of this portion of the video because there is nothing to be said for these sunscreens. Not one redeeming quality, not one single reason for you to look twice at these sunscreens when you see them in stores. When I say I don't like mineral sunscreen, this is why, because this is exactly what comes to mind. There's a few reasons mineral sunscreens are the worst thing ever. Most of them anyway, not all of them, obviously. Zinc oxide or titanium dioxide are the UV filters used in physical or mineral sunscreens. Usually zinc oxide. I don't see too many of them usually containing titanium dioxide. And the thing with zinc oxide is, is that it's really, really thick and really not great to apply on the skin. Obviously the horrendous white cast is a major, major issue with mineral sunscreens. Putting that aside though, the actual texture of these sunscreens is horrible. It does not feel nice to apply these to your skin whatsoever. They're extremely, extremely thick and it kind of just feels like you're applying a layer of cement over your skin. I don't know if that's a bit too dramatic, but it just feels horrible. <laughs> Extremely thick, difficult to apply, really uncomfortable on the skin. They don't really absorb into the skin either the way a regular cream or sunscreen would. They kind of just sit on top and create a layer on top of your skin and it not it, it does it just doesn't feel great. So so for all these reasons, it pretty much rules out this Cancer Council matte zinc lotion and this Neutrogena She Zinc lotion. And it rules out just about any mineral sunscreen that you'll see on the shelf. Any average mineral sunscreen that's just zinc based, I wouldn't even look twice. I really, really wouldn't bother buying these and trying them in the hopes that it's going to work for you. I just, I don't, I don't see that working out. And one big issue that I have with these zinc based sunscreens as well is that they've always got words like invisible, she, invisible where, she for who, I don't know why these companies are allowed to put words like that on their sunscreens when they're clearly not invisible and they're clearly not she. It, like as if the product wasn't bad enough, they've also got just blatant lies on the packaging. So it goes without saying that for a mineral sunscreen to be even worth considering, it needs to have some sort of tint because this tint is absolutely necessary for countering any white cast. But in saying that, just because a mineral sunscreen has a tint to it, it doesn't mean it's gonna be good. <laughs> and this next one is the perfect example of that. That's the Invisible Zinc Tinted Daywear Mineral Shield SPF 30. Again, the name Invisible Zinc, that shouldn't be legal <laughs> because it's not invisible. It, you can't have invisible. Is invisible zinc a thing? I don't think it is. I think this one comes in maybe two or three shades, light, medium, and dark. I got the light one because on the packaging it said this one suits 
light to medium skin tones. This one did not work for me and I'm not convinced enough to go and buy the next skin tone and see if that one's gonna work for me. Not worth my time and effort, really. I thought this one might be okay, but then upon applying it, the cast just didn't go down and it left me looking very gray and ashy and just, it's not a look. <laughs> it's not a look that I wanna go for. <laughs> so yeah, completely disregard that one. Another tinted one that doesn't make the cut is the Esme Skin Shield Natural Face Sunscreen. I haven't tried anything from Esme Skin besides this and I'm it's just one of those brands I'm really not interested in. But I, you know, thought I would give the sunscreen a go. I thought it would be worth a shot. Um, yeah, it wasn't great. Again, this one just left me looking very grey. The It didn't blend into the skin nicely and left me looking very grey. Also, I don't know what's in this one, but it smells horrible. <laughs> it smells really, really, really bad. Slathering a cream with that scent all over your face and leaving it on there it can't be a pleasant experience. So, so that's another one for the bin. <laughs> And next up in the tinted mineral sunscreen that didn't make the cut, we have this one from Sukin. This is again an SPF 30 sheer touch tinted sunscreen. I'll be honest, <laughs> all my prejudice aside, I went into this one with an open mind. I thought, you know, it might be worth a shot. Again, they had a few different skin tones. This one is light to medium, and then I think they have a medium to dark. So I'm not gonna lie, this one was almost okay. It was, it was very, very close to being a decent option and the good thing about this one is that it didn't leave me looking like a ghost the tint in this one was actually decent enough that it was able to blend into the skin and it didn't leave me looking horrible it also didn't have a really thick and gluggy kind of texture it was pleasant enough to apply the, my issue with this one was the smell again it's another one of those natural organic brands this one smells so much worse than the Esme skin one I don't know what's in there just stinks like really 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 bad if a product doesn't smell good how are you going to apply it all over your face you know and and leave it there leave that smell sitting right under your nose it's you can't do it and for me the smell just immediately made this one unwearable when i first bought this one i did mention it over on my instagram stories and then immediately after i opened it mentioned the smell and Many, many people replied and said, yeah, they had a similar experience. The smell just made this one completely unbearable. <laughs> so another one for the bin. <laughs> okay, if you've stuck around, thank you. I appreciate you. Now we're getting to the part of the video where I actually have some recommendations for you. Some mineral sunscreens that you actually maybe can consider buying and trying out for yourself. The first one is the Bondi Sands Sunny Days Hydrating SPF 50 Moisturizer. A few videos back I actually did a video where I reviewed the entire Bondi Sands skincare range and I did mention my review for this sunscreen over there as well. Alright, so let's start with the positives. The positives, we've got the texture, the texture is really nice, it's really quite fluid, a lot more fluid than I'd ever think we could get a physical sunscreen to be honest which makes it really nice and easy to spread and apply onto the skin. And it's also got a good enough tint that it doesn't leave any white cast on the skin whatsoever, which is really great. This one is an extremely matte, matte finish. The most matte of all the mineral sunscreens that I've tried. And the problem with that is that it kind of dries down really, really fast. So as you're applying it, it starts to dry down and it kind of all gets mixed up on your skin and then it just starts pilling and flaking everywhere. And when a product starts pilling and flaking all over the place, you really can't use it. So at first I thought this one was gonna be like a goner because if, if you can't figure out the pilling situation, you can't use a product, you know? But I did kind of figure out a way around it with this one. Instead of just getting the sunscreen and slathering it all over like I usually would, you kind of have to apply this one in sections. So get a little bit at a time and apply it on each section of the face one at a time. You can see that I'm doing that in the video here. And that way you're able to completely apply it in that section and it applies, rubs in nice and easy and you get that really nice finish without it pilling everywhere. And then you move on to the next section and next section and so on. And that way you can apply the sunscreen and it looks decent on the skin. And if you want a really true matte finish mineral sunscreen, then that's what you get from this one. It is a bit tedious and that's why it's 
the first one of the decent ones that I'm going to mention because it's not really my favourite but I can understand that some people might like this one. Next we have the Paula's Choice Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense SPF 30. This one's a very solid option. It's easy to apply, it sits comfortably on the skin, doesn't feel too heavy on the skin whatsoever. You don't get any white cast with this one and it's also got a nice matte dry down as well. This one I will say is a little bit too matte for my dry skin. Not as matte as the Bondi Sands but still pretty matte. <laughs> So it would be good for those of you maybe with oilier skin that prefer a matte finish on your sunscreens. But if you have drier skin like me, then maybe this one is a bit too matte for you. It is only an SPF 30, which isn't the worst thing in the world. But, you know, if we can get an SPF 50 or SPF 50 plus, it's definitely better to go for those options instead. And the texture for this one's really quite nice as well. It's more of a lotion base rather than a thick creamy base. Pretty good option for oily skin, definitely. Next we have the Ultraviolet Lean Screen SPF 50 Plus. No surprises here, Ultraviolet absolutely know how to make really good sunscreen. Making a good mineral sunscreen is definitely a challenge and they did a really good job with this one. This one has more of a thicker cream kind of texture. It doesn't have a thin lotion consistency. Tint is good enough on this one that you don't get a white cast. And the dry down for this one is more of a satin matte. So this one is a little bit more comfortable on my dry skin. I still do have to wear a moisturizer underneath, but it's a lot more comfortable to wear on my dry skin than some of the other options. One thing I will say that's quite nice about some of these tinted mineral sunscreens is they leave the skin with a really nice blurred effect. They are tinted products, but they don't really leave any coverage on the skin, but they do kind of even out the skin tone a little bit and give the skin a little bit of a blurred effect. And with these better tinted mineral sunscreens, I really do quite like that finish that they can give. And I definitely do find that I get that nice blurred look with the Paula's Choice, the Ultraviolet, and even the Bondi Sands mineral sunscreen as well. So it makes them really nice to wear on their own if you want to have a makeup free day, but they also do work well underneath makeup as well if you do want to apply makeup over top. Now we're reaching top two territory. In second place, I have these ones. These are my most recent mineral sunscreen finds and they have been very impressive. And that's these ones from New Day Skin. So New Day Skin is a brand that was founded by a couple of mothers. They wanted to create a sunscreen that would be really comfortable and easy for their children to wear every single day. So they came up with these mineral sunscreens and they did a really good job. They really are very nice and very comfortable to apply. So the brand comes with two options. We have the Good Vibes sunscreen and we also have the Happy Days sunscreen as well. These are lightly scented. The Happy Days one has a very faint vanilla scent and the Good Vibes has an apple scent, but they're very faint. They're not strongly fragranced at all. These two do have a few features in common and obviously they're in second place, which means they're very easy to apply, very comfortable on the skin and don't leave any white cast on the skin at all. They also both have that thicker cream kind of consistency as well. Where they differ is with the finish. So Happy Days has more of a glowy finish and Good Vibes has more of a satin matte finish. So if you have drier skin and you just prefer more of a glow, then go for the Happy Days. If you prefer more of a matte finish, then go for the Good Vibes. Another good thing about these is they come in 100ml tubes and I think they go for about $35 a tube. So very, very well priced and definitely a great option to reach for every day. And finally, my top pick is the Naked Sundays Collagen Glow Mineral Sunscreen. The texture of this one is that more thicker cream kind of a texture. Very, very easy to apply and feels like absolutely nothing on the skin. And of course, absolutely no white cast with this one. The reason why this is my top pick is because I really enjoy the finish of this on my skin. As it says, it's a collagen glow sunscreen, so it leaves the skin with a really nice glowy finish. Not too glowy, it's a very moderate kind of a glow, but I just prefer a more glowy finish with my dry skin. My skin doesn't have any natural glow, I need to give it glow, so that's why I prefer glowy finishes in my products. And this one gives me that. It gives me exactly what I need. And again, same with the other tinted mineral sunscreens I mentioned. It gives that skin that nice blurred effect and that nice evenness to it. So it looks really nice on the skin on makeup free days. And it also wears really well underneath makeup as well. I don't have any issues with any of these top four in terms of pilling and wearing them underneath makeup. They all wear really great underneath makeup, which is great. These better mineral sunscreen options have all been released quite recently. I'd say within the last two or so years 
So it's definitely great to see that we're starting to get more and more decent mineral sunscreen options out there on the market. Because I think for far too long, all the mineral sunscreens out there were just complete rubbish. So for the people that have no choice but to use mineral sunscreens, it really wasn't a great situation for them. So definitely good to see that we're seeing a lot more decent options out there. And I hope this is a trend that continues and we start to see a lot more decent mineral sunscreens that are being released. If you have a mineral sunscreen that you enjoy that I didn't mention in this video, make sure to leave the name in the comments below. And if you have tried any other sunscreens that I mentioned in this video, let me know your thoughts as well in the comments. I'm really interested to hear what you guys have to say. As always, if you enjoyed this video or you found it useful, make sure to leave me a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and don't go anywhere. Check out last week's video where I go through my February favorites, and I'll see you in the next one.